nitrogen can be produced through various processes. Pressure swing adsorption or also known as PSA is one. PSA started when it was in the 1980s. During that time, PSA was only applicable for small volume and low purity applications. At present, PSA and is versatile as they are capable to be used for a variety of volumes, purity requirements, and usage patterns. The nitrogen produced can be used as an inert agent for explosion prevention, fire prevention, and chemical blanketing. PSA operates based on the principle of the adsorption process. It is a continuous process. In fact, PSA has some superior characteristics over other nitrogen production processes as it can produce nitrogen at a variety of purity ranges. Furthermore, PSA is suitable to produce nitrogen gas at a steady state flow rate. This is process flow diagram of pressure swing adsorption. PSA, the temperature and pressure of the process should be controlled at 20 degrees Celsius and 5 bars. The atmosphere air has to be removed the impurities using carbon filter before entering the adsorption unit to prevent the carbon molecular sieve CMS from being damaged by moisture. For the adsorption unit, will operates within 5 to 10 bars and the outlet gas will be the nitrogen gas which typically fall under product ranges of flow rate 50 to 1500, pressure of 6 to 8 bars and purity of 95% to 99.999%. The flow rate will directly affect the nitrogen purity, hence, it is important to set up the desired level of purity. Separation of air in the tower is totally depending on these superior materials called carbon molecular sieve. Next, we will look at the mechanism of adsorption. Inlet air which mainly contain nitrogen and oxygen will pass through the carbon molecular sieve inside adsorption tower and the end product will be nitrogen. The molecular sieve has fine pores passing all through it to ensure the adsorbent material have high surface area. The pores are all with uniform size, which is 3.0 angstrom. The sizes of oxygen and nitrogen molecules are 2.9 and 3.1 angstrom respectively. This size is specifically chosen such that oxygen molecules will be trapped within whereas the slightly large nitrogen molecules will not. The trapped oxygen molecules adhere to the surface of the molecular sieve, forming layers there. At first, clean and dry compressed air enters tower 1 go through the process mechanism in CMS. This phase is called the separation phase. Most of the nitrogen produced in tower 1 exits the system to the storage buffer tank, while a small portion of the generated nitrogen is flown into tower 2 in the opposite direction thus depressurized tower 2 permits the releases of oxygen molecules as they will separate from the sieves and get carried away through the exhaust by the small nitrogen flow coming from tower 1. This will make the sieves available for the next adsorption phase. We call this process of cleaning an oxygen saturated tower regeneration. After a certain period, the pressure in both towers will equalize and they will change phases from adsorbing to regenerating and vice versa. Therefore, compressed air will enter tower 2 which due to the depressurization, are able to restart the adsorption process. This referred to swing of pressure. Eventually, the two-tower PSA system allows for continuous nitrogen production and at a desired purity level. That's comprise all contents of the video. Thanks for watching.